So it's time for some change, and for that, I need a floor plan. In fact, I'm going to be changing quite a bit here. You see, the plan is that I want to really start to make projects with Maker Tales. So for that, I need to sort of plan out this entire space here. I need to put this into Blender for CAD Sketcher, and then from there, I'm going to dive in with VR to really start to get an idea of what's going on here. Now, before I do that, let me just quickly show you the general idea of what's to come here in the future, because the idea is pretty interesting. So first, over here on this side, I'm planning to do a more sort of presentation style of setup. I'm gonna have a big table here. Take a look at people like Evan and Caitlin or NerdForge. I really wanna be able to to make projects with you guys and try out all the crazy ideas that you guys want me to create. And then from that, also, let's take a look at the other side and what mess that is. I'm a little bit ashamed of it, but here it is. It is quite a mess. I really have not implemented my cleat wall good enough at all. I have put more of those sound panels on that I've created in the past. They're incredible. In fact, I didn't show you, but this right here, this is actually a sound panel as well. And well, I really want to be able to have maybe even an electronics table or maybe over on that side. I don't know. I need to floor plan all of this out. I have no idea where I'm going forward on this, but all I do know is I cannot wait to get to make some projects. So with that said, let's get some dimensions down into Blender. A few moments later. So now with the notebook full of a couple of uncomprehendable scribbles of all the dimensions and features of this room, I'm gonna go and put these all into Blender. I'm gonna do a real overview here in this video and if you want the full unedited version of how I go about doing all of this, it's going to be over in my Patreon. So just let you know if you wanna learn the exact way of how I'm doing all this, it's over there. So starting with a nice fresh Blender precision file all set up and ready, I am using a development branch of of CAD Sketcher, so there are a few things that might go a little bit weird, but oh well, that's the way it is. So I'm just gonna create a sketch, go for the top down, press seven on my numpad, and the first thing I've gotta do is just sort of give myself some sort of reference dimension here, because we're gonna be doing some pretty big length, so I will select this line, press Alt-D to dimension it, and the first distance I'm wanting to put in is 5,000, and I click in here, 5,535 millimeters. There we go. Now I already know what we're dealing with. A nice big, big number there. And then I want to do another line down in this direction here. Select that once again. Go Alt D. And this one's going to be 2,745. So 2,745. And there we go, that's looking already good. Then I'll do another line. I'm just pressing L for the line tool. And then I'll do a line there, right click to cancel that and dimension this one, Alt D. This one is going to be 4,395. And Technically speaking, I don't really have to do anything else here apart from just do a line across there, I think, because then all the degrees of freedom is this right here. And I'm going to do it in such a way. I'm going to click on, and I always get this one wrong. I think it's this one, and then shift click here, and then I press, uh, I think it's shift C. Nope, wrong way around. So I've got to click this one, then that one, then click shift C, and that's how it's done properly. If not, you get rid of the origin point, and that is really annoying. But as you can see, we are now a fully defined sketch. Now, I'm really going to be using CAD Sketcher how I use CAD Sketcher, which is I don't make everything precision through CAD Sketcher. There's no need to make everything parametric here. So this here is pretty much as much as I'm going to use CAD Sketcher for this project ish. And then I'm going to go here, we're going to go turning that into a mesh. Yeah, I'm going to go with this way. I'm going to call this the floor plan. Um, I might add a couple of things later on, but just for the right this minute, I'm going to call this the core floor plan, actually. Core floor plan, we'll leave that sketch. I'm just going to save the file now because I'm working with an iffy one of CAD Sketcher. And now with that there, let's see, the way that I'm going to go about this is a little bit interesting in the sense that I think what I'm going to do is I want to do a solidify. 
thing. That's yeah, I'm gonna solidify and then solidify again. So this thickness here, this first one, so if I go up like that and then I put in some number like 1000, that's gonna be one meter. Oh, and you see that jaggediness? That's because my view here needs to be set to one. And there we go, now that's no longer jaggy in the distance. Um, now the height here, this is the height of the internal space. This is gonna be 200, uh, sorry, 2480 because it is two meters 48. And that's looking good to me. Um, I'm gonna fill this. So there's a whole bunch of settings here, by the way, for like rim and rim only. And there's so much right this minute. I'm just gonna go for even thickness like this. And I'm happy with that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solidify this solidification. I know it's weird. Just just watch and you'll get it for a moment. So here we go, we're gonna go for a solidify once again. This is gonna be the quote wall thickness. So wall thickness, we're gonna go, is it in the minus or the positive that I want to go? I think it's the positive. Let's go something big here. See, yep, it is in the positive. I'm gonna go even thickness. I want this to be 100. So that gives me 10 centimeter thick walls. Just means that if it, if I need them, they're there, and that's brilliant. Now, technically, this is now an enclosed box, and just to prove that, I'm gonna press Shift, right-click on the top, then I'll press Shift A, go mesh, insert a cube here, and make this cube, I don't know, maybe we'll go for 5,000, so it's nice and big like this. Press G, Z, bring that up, and I'm gonna actually turn this into snapping, vertex snapping, go for closest, yeah, and then G, Z, hold down control and then I can snap it to the top there. Go into edit mode, I'm gonna select this face just to pull it out on the X a little bit like that. Same on this one here, GX a little bit like this. And then I'm going to just go G, Z minus 100. So that is the thickness of this. And then cause I have the ball tool currently on, I'm also just gonna quickly go into edit mode and bring this down. There's no need for this to be so big. Um, I'm just gonna do a brush Boolean, not an auto Boolean, a brush Boolean. So remember, get the add-on for this. So with those selected, I'm just gonna press Control numpad minus, and there we have it cut like so. Okay, I am happy with that. I'm going to now select this. I'm going to call this with the F2. I'm going to call this roof cut. Uh, uh, roof CA because it is the cutaway of the roof. And then I'm going to press H to hide it and do another little save. Now with that save out the way, we have to, well, put stuff into this room. Because um, I have the origin point of the sketch right there in the zero, zero. That makes my life quite a bit easier for a few reasons. So I'm gonna put my cursor over to the world origin. Um, well, hello, why did you not do that? Cursor, world origin, thank you. Um, now that I have the floor plan in place, this is the very basic floor plan. The first thing I think I'm gonna add is going to be the doors and the windows. So those things, let's pop them in. I've got a door on the other side as well. And then after those doors, down here, I've got this sort of power strip that goes all the way around a couple of these walls. So I'm gonna add that in as well. And then maybe after that, we're gonna add the table in as well. And then from there, it should be a time to jump in and see how it looks like in VR and see what we're feeling about the space. So that took about an hour to recreate because I got confused with some of the scribbles that I gave myself, but now it's time to jump into VR and take a look and see if I've got the scaling right. I spent a little bit of time just aligning it up so that it looks cool on camera. So let's see how this is gonna turn out. So as you can see, when I'm facing in this direction, 
I am literally seeing the window perfectly. When I look in that direction, there is that door. There is the desk. And yeah, this is looking awesome. Now those ball things there, those are actually the controllers. I have them there right this minute because if I went about and played around with them, well, it could easily screw up all the alignment that I've done here. One thing I am going to do while I'm at it is right this minute, you can see when I look up, it's all just gray. What I'm going to do is I can quickly go into Blender and actually remove that Boolean from the top. So let me just quickly do that. And there we have it. As you can see, I now have a lovely ceiling, a nice enclosed space. I can really sort of see my entire workshop area here. I have actually everything sort of pretty well placed, which I'm really happy with. Um, this is going to be really interesting now because I'm going to be able to properly sort of really build the desk that I want to create here, that worktop. And I'm going to actually be able to see if I want the electronics table over in that corner or not. And yeah, this is going to be brilliant. So with that made, I've done some blocking out and this here is sort of what I've got in my head right this minute. Now, this back wall here, I really have no idea what I'm gonna do there. So I would love it if you have any suggestions, leave it down in the comments below. The key thing is sort of a background that shows people that I am a maker of sorts. And that's pretty much all I have in mind right this minute. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. Without you, I truly would not be able to do Maker Tales. Thank you so incredibly much. If you're enjoying what I'm doing here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.